Hey, this is Dave Pryor. We are here at Agile 2019 in the leading Agile booth, day three of the conference. We're doing interviews all week long with speakers and thought leaders and people that make Agile happen for the rest of the world. Ellen Goddess Diener, did I get it right? Beautiful. I'm always worried. He just told me how to <laughs> say it right. And Andy Reptiner here. Um, so you're doing a talk tomorrow, and it's on what is your product making large-scale product development work? That's right. So what is the focus of this talk? So the focus of the talk is three principles that we introduce as, a, as underpinning um, good product definition. Okay. And we believe um, defining a product in the right way really drives that kind of discovery and delivery work okay. sur surrounding product management, um, product delivery. Okay. So what are the biggest challenges with, with, before we get to the three things? Mm. It's about large scale. So how big are we talking? So the domain that I work in right. um, is a 300,000 person company. Um, there's 40,000 technologists within that. And my domain is eight, around 8,000 people. Wow. Um, so it's a okay. pretty big scale. So there's a lot of people working on building the products that you're creating. Exactly, yeah. Okay. And the three things that you have to have to make this work at scale are? Ellen. Ah, oh, okay. wow, look at that. <laughs> so he was off. supposed to offer the three and he just kicked it back <laughs> the over classic there. Hand <laughs> nice. Okay, first is uh, <laughs> adopting outside in thinking. Okay. Outside in thinking. The second is taking the long view. Okay. And the third is going as broad as practical. Okay. So, so outside in, long view, as broad as practical. I'm going to take them one at a time. Yep. So what does outside in mean? From the perspective of the customer. Okay. So one of, one of the anti-patterns, I guess, if we talk about the other side of it, one of the things we see is um, this concept of, of technology-led product yeah. definition or organizational-led product definition. Um, but what we really want to look at is how do we get people thinking from the outside in? Okay. So really defining your products from a customer viewpoint. So that's that's an issue. I mean, even if you're in a small scale, that's an issue. If the, the developers are just building what they want to build because they think people want it. But if you're talking about 8,000 people and they don't have clarity on that, that's going to be a massive issue. Huge. Yes. Okay. Yes. And, I, and I've noticed the pattern actually in smaller organizations as well. Mm. Okay. In domains that are both for internal product or and commercial. Right. But it's really exacerbated at scale, as in Andy's organization. So if you don't have this, this is another example of people just scaling dysfunction and making things worse. Yes. Okay. Absolutely. So how do you create that awareness? Outside in? Yeah. So we have a number of techniques. I just keep that, waiting to see who's yeah, going to yeah, throw yeah. <laughs> So we have a number of techniques that we introduced in the talk um, okay. that we've used in product definition workshops with mainly with leadership teams okay. um, who are embarking on the sort of transformation journey okay. um, and looking at you know, how do we really think about our organization differently. Um, and so we run these workshops and we bring in techniques to start and thinking, right, how do, how do we define our product outside in? Okay. So bringing the customer into the room, um, starting to explore, you know, what is our, you know, what are the kind of components, the features, and then ultimately the products and how are they kind of all meshed together. So they're kind of co-creating that definition together? Exactly yes. That. Yeah. Well, that's got to be weird for the executives because they all know what everyone needs, right? Uh, not necessarily. <laughs> and part of the art and science of doing these workshops is you're weaving all three of those principles together okay through uh you know your workshop design is which techniques you're going to use to bring home those different principles okay and we're not necessarily saying these are the principles yeah but using the techniques as a means of discovery for themselves okay so it's it's i'm guessing at this but creating clarity on what the customer wants but also maybe helping the leadership see that maybe what they've decided the customer needs is not what the customer needs. Yeah, and then the implications of that to their organizational design. Okay. Um, you know, one thing we see, if you if you define your product and we get into some of the other principles, you know, as if you define your product, the third principle we talked about was broad versus narrow. Right. If you think narrowly about product, then you have a propagation of products with right. product management lined to each of those different products, thinking more siloed. Uh, you end up with you know vision, strategies, roadmaps, priorities, financials, all that kind of stuff at a very kind of granular level, okay. which leads to a lot of coordination cost in delivering something of value to you. Lots yeah. of backlogs, difficulty prioritizing, you know, convoluted structures, and the uh, epitome of Conway's law. So this is really interesting because 
we're always fighting against the verticals of we have development, we have design, we have QA. But now that we're switching towards a more product-centric approach, which is what I know you guys do, you still have those silos you have to combat. They're just different, like all these different products. When you're talking about a bigger product strategy, like how would you clarify what that actually is? This broad, this broad view. So maybe it's worth or an example. An example or yeah, yeah. Um, so one of the examples we use is um, you know, I'm in the infra- I'm in the infrastructure okay. um, domain of our organisation. So we provide. We provide solutions to our, our, I guess, our internal employees. Okay. It's one part of our, one part of our product area. Um, and historically, you know, if you look at the the employee experience, um, you have many different touch points. Whether that's your office suite, right. your, your 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 kind of communications tools, your phone, your desktop, your, and and what we've done is we've really started looking at that of you know, what is the experience our our employees desire. And it's more of a kind of a productivity or a collaboration experience. And so we start to think of the product as like collaboration um, rather than okay. the phone, the chat, mess, you know, the messaging bot, all that kind of stuff is it's actually thinking about it as a you know, as collaboration is the product. So in what you just said, instead of the customer being somebody external that we're selling stuff to, you're saying the customer is the employee yeah, and, so the, f- and the company should provide a good experience for the employee, which is not... I've worked at a lot of places that don't understand mm. <laughs> that at all. Because it's just like, come here and work, do your thing. Yeah, exactly. Here's 17 tools that don't fit yeah. together, figure it out. And that's, a, that's a huge problem in, in the domain that uh, Andy works in. Okay. Where, because you basically have, at a meta level, two flavors of product in terms of who the customer is. You have a commercial product that is sold commercially and the right. organization's primary revenue is from that. Or you have products that are built to run the operation of the business, and the and the value considerations are slightly different that you're looking for, right? So you want to have um, operational, reduce operational expenses, and have productivity of employees. Where if you have a commercial software product, you have to really understand who the customer or customers are in the market, yeah, and different needs that they have, and yet. For internal, from an internal product thinking point of view, that's a particular challenge and at scale because they are, you want to, the internal customers, they're customers. Yeah. Right? And they, they have needs. We need to understand who they are. Not all customers are created equal or users are created equal. So you have to, that influences your, that your prioritization decisions. Okay. So um, if, if it was a, a something we were selling externally, you would measure ROI or something like that. How do you measure the success of the value delivered for an internal customer? Is it is it retention? Is it is there some other way of tracking it? Yeah, I think there's a number of yeah. indicators. Um, you know, we do use kind of some of the traditional sort of um, uh, NPS that kind of stuff. Okay. Um, but really, yeah, those indicators around you know retention, um, how we attract talent. Okay. Um, we're particularly seeing you know the um, we're seeing in certain parts of the world the you know the the kind of millennial generation are really you know making decisions about where they work based on the workplace and the experience um, and yeah the because experience, about the, the tools experience. yeah you know they turn up on day one and if they can't you know they can't get access to the you know the slacks the git report all that kind of good stuff yeah. um the size of their monitors it's all sorts of kind of you know um things that they they, they want from an experience of the place they work yeah um, and they can go work somewhere else and especially yes yeah, there's else. some there's especially if you're an agile because there's so many more jobs than if you, people yeah, if you're you know if you're and a computer science graduate you're in data science or anything then you know the the marketplace hot right yeah um, so yeah we see we see the workplace and the workplace experience as a huge differentiator for the firm cool okay. yeah and I, I was just going to say that that's one of the possible metrics and you okay. also could have a situation where like a client i've been working with has um there's a lot of error recovery because the internal users okay. are having difficulty working with the product. Yeah. They have a whole back office operation and their actually time is money and the cost of delay of closing those transactions that are an error because the product yeah. that the people are working with uh, is difficult and causes errors. That's, that's money. It's huge because it's, an external customer, you're just taking up support time. But if they're internal, they're taking up support time yeah. and not working. Yep. Yeah. Yep, okay. and there is a cost of delay in yeah. terms of finishing those transactions out. Cool. So there's a lot a of a lot of things you can imp- look at. Yeah, 
You okay. really have to know the product and how it is impact the customer and the broader business and the business goals okay. to figure out that value. So you're making sure it aligns with company strategy all the way Absolutely, down. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Now we haven't talked about long lived yet. Yeah. Or you called it something else in the beginning, but that's what it says on my notes. So I'm going to or adopt the long view. Okay. So yeah. thank you. So <laughs> what does that mean? Well, uh, a lot of people think about a product. They call an application or a component a product, right? A, or a project, something that delivers something for a product as a product. You know, a project, as you well know, is short-lived. It yeah. has a beginning and an end. A product hopefully has a long life cycle right and goes through the classic stages of introduction growth maturity and decline right and it can be years and years and years depending on the product it could be 20 30 years okay uh one of the clients i've worked with builds um devices that go on the top of mountains for transmitting signals that you know they don't want to go up there every two weeks no (laughs) right (laughs) exactly so the longer live the product is assuming you have a good product in a good market the better it is okay so you have to think about product thinking is looking at strategically looking at the marketplace where is the market going how do we go into adjacent markets or new markets how do we in add newer technologies and innovations and andy has a good example of of that that okay. that to keep the product healthy and alive over a long life cycle that's so product so, thinking so before you give the example um when i see pe- when i hear people talking about this it's always like the launch of the product or like the first two years of the product but the fact that it might die someday like that's not discussed because that will never happen yeah. but you're talking like the whole lifespan of the thing so you're asking them to think about that from the very beginning, like how many years before this thing is useless? And this is particularly a, a, a big challenge in big organizations where your product, I guess your customers are internal and you're at, you have the risk of ending up with almost this kind of graveyard of un, you know, un, unwound products. So yeah. they're still out there being used, but because we're thinking narrowly about the product definition, we're not thinking long, um, had the long view um, we think of it as a project mm-hmm. so we roll it out and the project is about just getting it out there not about then evolving it and managing it and you know and even bringing new technology and this kind of fits in with the innovation waves part of um, and we use the the product canvas that um, that Ellen um, produced and there's a part on there which is around innovation waves and we use that as a bit of a kind of tripwire to get people thinking about um, you know seeing new technology not as a new product but actually as a as a as a as a new innovation for our existing product so for example um the phone mm-hmm. for example the phone on your desk you know on your desk we're now bringing in software based phones um but if we thought of that as a separate product we'd spin up new product organization new product yeah. management new strategy and all this kind of st- rather than seeing it actually it's just the next wave of innovation within that kind of product that is phone so what you just said about the phones i've seen places where that segmentation like here's the new version of the product this one's going to be ip based or whatever and there's some new person that gets that as their kingdom exactly and now you have competing forces the old guy wants to keep the the dial-up phone on the desk working that's not healthy but how do you get people to think of it i mean it's a bigger like yeah, More so that's, and that's where some of these techniques come in and okay. using these workshops to really think about product, you know, what is your product and using the canvas really helps you think across these different te- disciplines, this, these different principles um, so that you know we explore the customer, right. who are the customers and we've got many different techniques for exploring that. We explore the, you know, the, the innovation ways, the longevity, where it is on the life cycle, get an appreciation from that end-to-end life cycle. Um, and then thinking much broader about the, you know, the definition of the product and differentiating it from components and features, actually products, which is driven by the customer value. Okay. Does this get almost into like a futurist kind of a thing? Because like, if you had said 20 years ago, there's going to be a whole wave of employees that are all about experience and whatever. Mm. And then you're saying, well, then here comes the Gen Z people. I mean, are you are you thinking about it at that cultural level, like a new kind of workforce rising in and maybe you don't know what the technology is going to go but you can see cultural shifts in people and how they use I think it ties into that you know this 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 um, purpose-driven 
you know, culture people need to really be connected with the purpose of their organization and, and what they're delivering. And I think the more siloed your organization is and the more you're kind of thinking just of this widget, you kind of lose some of that connection to the yeah. purpose. So I think having a broader definition where it's driven by customers, um, the customer viewpoint, gives you that much con more connected to something which is longer lived, it's got real purpose, you see the value. Um, yeah, I think there's And you lot. also can prepare for its demise at some point or its replacement at some point. Yeah. And you're part of that rather to your point, you know, this new innovation comes in, it's a new kingdom. Yeah. Actually, well, no, we're going to own that. It's we're going to own the cycles um, and we're just going to be here and we're going to grow and, and adapt and we're going to learn new technologies and new skills to bring in the new innovations, not just be, you know, yesterday's news. Okay. So for people that come from the traditional side, things have a beginning and an end. Like you mentioned the project definition, the PMI's project definition. They're used to that start and finish, but now it's like this ongoing, it's almost like working in a mail room. I mean, it just never ends. So <laughs> when do you get that sense of satisfaction? Like, okay, done, give me something new. Cause you're talking about constant waves of new stuff all the time. Don't you get right. kind of fatigued or doesn't need? And that's a different mindset, isn't it, that you need for that? The mindset of the long view? Yeah. Well, well, if we understand our customers, if we, as we like to say, fall in love right. with our customers' problems, and okay. struggles and opportunities and consider their pains and their gains as you do with a tool like the uh, the uh, one of the canvases that we value use, the value proposition, proposition canvas. Okay. Um, you're always looking for ways to address those pains and those gains. New technologies may be one of them, but you don't want to become enamored of those as, okay. as the solution. And you have to have a balanced perspective because you, you, know, you have your users but you also have to have business value. Yeah. You don't want to go out of business and you have to make sure the technology works. So it comes back to balancing value between those three partners, the customer who's interested in a desirable product, the business who wants something that's viable, right. and technology needing something feasible. So you always have to it's balance It's like a more multi-dimensional view of yeah. what this stuff is. Yeah. Okay, now you mentioned the canvases. Um, I'll add the link after we post the video, but if people want to find the campuses and learn more about this stuff, what's the best way to do it? Um, well, I have a two-part blog that explains the product canvas, okay. which is a two-part canvas uh, on our blog, ebgconsulting.com. Okay. And um, there's a blog about the three principles that Andy and I are presenting on tomorrow. Tomorrow as at well. 10:45. And I'm also committed here at to write an, another blog. Thank you, on, Andy. Uh, <laughs> okay. on the, um, your the name's gonna. The you're gonna be getting uh, kicked over. Where, okay. Yeah, yeah. We'll share the techniques in a blog as well. Okay. Uh, that, so if people aren't here, they can go look at the canvases now in the first blog post, and sometime after 11:30 yeah. tomorrow, <laughs> you'll create the other blog post. Exactly. Noon. <laughs> noon. Sorry. Okay. Noon. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. And what if people want to get in touch with you? What's the best way to do it? Yeah, so I'm on uh, Twitter or LinkedIn, usually the best. best bet. Okay, and they can go to your website? Right, okay. and Twitter and LinkedIn as well. All right, and we'll yeah. add all that stuff to the show notes. Awesome. Right. But thank you very much for coming by. This was great. Thanks, was Dave. Good, good getting good to talk to you, to you and good finally meeting you in person. Yeah, yeah. yeah. absolutely. This is good cool. To see you.